Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, this is a continuation of the Tweakery series. Um, my son tells me I've spelt tweak Tweakery wrong, but I've kind of invent. I, I think I've kind of invented a word, but um, it kind of describes what I'm trying to get across anyway. Um, things that shouldn't make a difference that do, um, and the, it's sort of the mad end of, of audio. Um, the one that is, mo is most most mocked by people who don't, who aren't into it. Sadly, because it's a shame, because people who are into it sort of feel a little bit like they don't talk about it, because, um, anyway. Um, so yeah, um, if you watch the news roundup that I did uh, for April, at the end I showed a little, anonymous little black, seemingly bo a box, that was very heavy, and asked the question, what's, what's this, what's, you know, what, what, what sort of tweak is this, do you think? Uh, I must admit, I don't tend to read comments very much now, um, partly because of the 1% who's kind of spoil it for everybody, but I, um, I get so many lovely comments and there'll be one from somebody who just likes to be angry about things. And it kind of spoil, you can spoil your weekend, so I don't tend to, I don't, I don't tend to sort of read them particularly much now. Um, I will always, always reply to any emails or any, you know, if you're want to ring me up, that's the best, that's the best way to contact really. Um, yeah, I showed, and I'll, I'll bring it across to you, a little anonymous black object, which has got no connections on it. It's extremely heavy, uh, rubber, rubber base. The rubber seems to appear, disappear inside. This is like a, a machined piece of metal of some sort. I would hate to say, you don't know what it is. Actually, it's very heavy. Uh, it says HRS on the top. If you can just catch that in the light. Can I do that in the light? Uh, not quite. Um, so yeah, it says HRS, really heavy, no connections, no anything. Now, a bit of a backstory on this one, and the reason I tried these out, and it goes back a long way actually, I'm not even going to guess when, um, but I used to have a customer who ended up with a pretty high-end system, and he was always experimenting with different things. Uh, and I think we'd ended up with, I think he had a Rockport turntable, Quetzu cartridge, um, Quetzu Red Signature, I think it was. And then 52, I think we'd been round the houses on preamps. I think he listened to the cello, cello suite, the audio research SP11, SP15. Can't remember what else. Loads of, tried loads of different preamps. Uh, the Krell, and the, the name 52 was the best, that's what he chose, uh, which surprised me to be honest, but it did, yeah, it did suit the system best. And uh, he had a Krell, I think it was a 200. Krell. I was going to say 80, but I think it was a 200. Two Pro Response 4s, which were the big, the big responses, because uh, he had a huge, huge room, I mean, ridiculously big room, probably close on 40 feet long, I think it was. Um, actually, it could have been more than that, actually, but it was a big, really big room, I and mean, the system was lost in it. And he had two Rel studios, the, the top Rel, the, 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 which are almost the size of this coffee table, um, one per channel, which would normally wouldn't do, but the scale of that room, it, it sort of, it sort of really added something to this. And it was, they were barely, barely working. It was just, just, just about coming in, just filling out the bottom end. And um, one time he rang me up and said, "I've just made a really big improvement to the system." He said, "And it's, it's barely, it's, it's hardly cost me anything." He says, "It hardly cost me anything." This. So I went up there and had a look, and on top of his system there were little cylindrical, not cylindrical, but sort of almost like. Um, Little wheels, I would say, but sort of of something on top of each of his components. And he said, I've, "I've had some lead ingots made and I've put them on top of all my bits of equipment." And he said, "The difference it's made is tremendous." I thought that's a bit that's a bit of an odd one, Andy. Where, 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 are, you, where are you going with this? What's anyway? He took them all off, played the system, put them all back on again, and it was radically different. It was sort of much more dynamic, much clearer, actually, weirdly, much, much clearer. One of the preamp, one of the power amp. He may actually, I'm trying to remember, I think he may have actually put some on the speakers. Uh, but my memory is failing me on that one. I think it's certainly on the preamp and certainly on the power amp. And it was, a, yeah, like I said, a really big difference. I was thinking, well, but surely, all you're doing is damping the case. I mean, it's not doing anything other than that. Why, why would that make any sort of difference to the sound quality of it? But it did. Um, 
I mean, whatever. I think Andy's actually um, emigrated to Australia now, I think. Uh, so I've not seen him for years. But that was, yeah, really interesting. Really interesting. It just sort of stuck with me as a memory. And then a few years later, uh, I was talking to the importer for Stax, Kisaki, Lyra, a guy I've known for a long, long time. Uh, he's been in the industry for over 40 years. And he said, uh, I'm doing HRS. He said, they do tables, they do platforms, they do... So very, very high end, very, very high end, he says, but they're really good. And he said, something that might interest you, he said, I've got some little dampers. So what you do, you put them on top of your equipment um, and it deadens everything. It stops any resonance within the structure. Do you want to try some, he says. So go on then. So thinking, well, you know, I, I respect... You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a chap of respect. I mean, there's some people who just try and sell you things. Nigel isn't like that. Nigel's a proper enthusiast, and he would only suggest things if they were uh, really worth doing. So he sent through the heaviest box I think I've ever received at the shop. It was only small. But it was probably, probably the, the heaviest box I've ever received. And in it were something like 20 of these little... these. Various sizes, also feet, uh, and a record clamp as well, made out, made in the same way, which is like a sort of a, like I say, machined out heavy metal of some sort, some sort of alloy, um, with a rub, like a rubber insert. The feet had the rubber inserts either side with the metal on the insert, whatever. The, 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 the clamp was similar thing, obviously round to this. Um, loads of different products, all made out, made in the same way. Uh, later on, after that, he sent me a platform, and the platform was superb, absolutely superb platform. So again, made in the same way, very, very heavy. This sort of rubber underneath, which is, like I say, it's a bit like zobethane, but I, t I don't think it is. It's more, it's firmer than zobethane. It's a slightly different somehow. Um, and I took them around to a few different customers, and in every case, it was a similar effect to the lead ingot, but somewhat prettier and somewhat smaller. Um, and like, why would that make any difference? Why would, you know, and I can sort of demonstrate the, the, the effect on the case. Um, I mean, this is, I've just chosen this because it's quite resonant. This is a Stax T8000 Energizer. And if you tap the case, there's a definite bzz, as you tap it. Putting that on. Gone. And you'd think, well, so what? It's also, okay, the, the, case is, the case now doesn't vibrate. How can that... It's not going to affect anything else because it's not damping the circuit board. It's not damping anything else. It's just damping the case, really. If you look at... If, so if you're being sort of pinicky about it, that's all it's doing. It's not doing anything else other than that. But in every situation when I've put these on, it's always made things sound better. And the first thing I ever tried was with a customer... Um, who's ended up buying quite a few of them, actually. Um, and we put one on, t he had an um, Isotec Aquarius, is it called? I sold it to him, I should be able to remember what it's called. I think Isotec, Isotec Aquarius, mains filter. Just stuck one on the top of that. Very, you know, very cynical. So sort of, what are you doing now? What are you doing to my system? What are you doing? So put one of those on and it was like, <laughs> that's changed quite a lot. What happened there? Take it off again. Oh, yeah, okay. So the sound had sort of stepped out, took it off, stepped back in again. And it was definitely a sort of, okay. So I had the box, well, not all of them. I had a, a few with me of different sizes. And we just ended up going right through his systems. Put one on the preamp, oh yeah, that's better. One on the power amp, the two power amps, yeah, that's better. Um, actually experimented a little bit as well, but we ended up with, started with a small one on the preamp and it was great. Slightly bigger, oh, that's better. Slightly bigger, oh, that's gone worse now. So you can almost you can go too far with it. You can over damp. Uh, I mean, his preamp is a Tom Evans. Well, it's the the top the top version of the Vibe, which I forget the name of now. Is it Vibe, Pulse, whatever combination? Um, and it's sort of plastic cased, or acrylic case anyway. So it probably yeah that that seemed to yeah too much on that. It seemed to go off sort of go off a cliff and sounded it sounded compressed if you went too far. So. There's definitely something going on. I mean, I don't totally get 
isolation. Why would isolating something, electronics, why does, how can it be affected? I, mean, I, I did have a chat with, there's a guy who used to do, sadly used to do, because he was a really good engineer, he used to do some work for me, um, re doing repairs and things like that, and he's, he was just doing it as a hobby. He's, he's a, a nuclear physicist and a very, very bright guy. Uh, and he said, well, actually, f things can resonate. You do get strange currents, you know, eddy currents and things going on that can affect the, the performance of things. It, 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 it is sort of probably measurable. He was sort of, it, and he's not, he's not a hi-fi guy. He's a, the, the ultimate cynic. He doesn't actually think that spending lots of money on preamps should make a difference. You know, he's, he's, he's one of those people who's pure engineer, you know, if it, if it measures it like this, then it will be good. But he was sort of saying, well, no, actually, it does kind of make sense. Um, so, yeah, possibly there is something going on. Interestingly, I mean, Name Audio, there's a few companies out there who have isolated the, the, the circuit board. I mean, people used to complain about things like the, the Name Nate 3 and the Name Nate 5, that the sockets are all loose, but it's, it's all isolated. Everything's, you know, separated out. Um, and it does seem to be a thing. So this is kind of part of that l line of logic, really. I mean, these are supposed to be supposed to kind of work w in conjunction with the feet that they do, but I've I've used the feet that they do, and they're really good, uh, very very effective as are the weights. But you don't have to use the two together. You should be able to either use a weight or use the feet or use both, uh, and it's like a cumulative effect. It seems to get better. Uh, I can't remember if I said this, but the platform that they do, well, they do a few platforms, but there's a platform, it's a thousand pounds, but it's amazing. If I mean, if you put it under a six or seven thousand pound record player, it's really good value. Under a, a Riga Planner 3 or a project, not so much, but it, it's all, uh, you have to sort of, you have to sort of think of this as, as the sort of system it's aimed at. Uh, the higher end stuff does seem to be more susceptible to the, the, the stranger, the stranger uh, tweaks, to be honest. So it's it's kind of when, once you get up into the bit, the higher end stuff, then it's not really an expensive accessory, particularly. Uh, what is expensive is if you get into their their, their high fire racks. I had a customer who who asked about them because he'd seen pictures and he'd sort of got a rough idea of what the price was. He was prepared to spend a lot of money on a rack because he wanted the very best for what he had. Um, quite high end, end up set up with uh, what was his setup? I think he uses Accuphase, Accuphase CD player, amplifier. Uh, I can't remember what his turntable is, but I fitted a, yeah, what is his turntable? Might be VPI, actually, if I fitted a Koetsu, not Koetsu, a, a Kiseki to it, a Purple Heart, ages ago. Um, big Town Noise he had as well, but he, um, he wanted a better rack. I started pricing it up, and when we got to about 20,000, I decided it was probably going to be too much, really, um, because I don't think we took anything like as many shelves as he needed. So it, yeah, table for the hi-fi table for the price of Mercedes. I can't, yeah, it's not something that I think is a, going to be a big seller. But these things, yeah, um, quite interesting, really. I mean, I think this one, uh, <laughs> complete lack of research as usual. I can't remember how much this one is. I think they go from about 120 pounds. I think this one's about 140. Which seems like a lot, but actually, when you hold the thing, it, it's it's a nicely engineered thing, uh, and obviously, I think I've said this before. Anything that's made in small numbers is is always disproportionately expensive, because it is a, our our hobby is a, is a small world. There's not enough. There's, you don't not going to sell hundreds of these. Um, no way. So yeah, so it's yeah interesting. I mean, I've not put them on the website yet, but if you if you want to try one of these, if you're sort of local and you want to bob in and, and borrow and borrow one for a weekend. Don't take my word for it, my waffling on about these things. Um, just take one home and try it, because it's really interesting. Particularly if you've got sort of a medium to high-end system, it's definitely worth trying it, actually. So it's, yeah, another mad product. That he's like, well, I don't understand why this works, really. And okay, yeah, you, you, could, you could just put house brick on there, and it'd probably do a lot of what that does. But it's just whether you want a house brick on, on your preamp and power amp and... Well, that sort of thing. I think it's just a neat solution uh, that kind of looks proper and whatever. So, yeah, that's it. HRS, uh, American company, might be wrong. Re <laughs> research, um, HRS, yeah, really crazy, crazy product. So, yeah, 
leave us at that for now. Um, I can't think what I've got coming up next. I've got a retro review I'm going to do. I, was, I keep talking about I'm going to uh, film a uh, refurbishment system deck turntable. I've just never, I, I can never find time to do that really because that's my turntable that I'm going to refurbish to sell. So soon that'll come. Um, I've got some other tweakery stuff to do. Uh, quite, actually, quite a lot of tweakery stuff to do. Some people have actually, what interested, some people have asked and they want, after I did the video on sort of music I can't listen to anymore because I've demonstrated it so often that it's kind of, bur you know, I've been kind of burnt out that I can't listen to it anymore because it, I suppose certain tracks I listen to now just it's like oh that's work it doesn't it's it's not a pleasure thing anymore it's become a work thing and it's kind of spoiled it the views for that video are, were, have been crazy people have re <laughs> really sort of engaged with it um, unfortunately some people and this is why partly why I've stopped reading comments now uh, some people got the wrong end of the stick with that how can you not like Quincy Jones how dare you say that? I do wonder what you, what on earth you do listen to. I've got all that sort of thing going on. So I've decided I'm going to step back from comments now. I'm going to have to because it, it's, it can be quite depressing. Um, I, but a lot, of people, what was that? a lot of people have been saying, why don't I do a video about music that's good for demonstrations? The difficulty I have with that is that I don't think you should use trick recordings. I don't think you should use something that is brilliantly recorded, necessarily. I mean, if, you, if some of your favourite music is brilliantly recorded, all the better, but it needs to be some music that you enjoy. I mean, I've, uh, I've got recordings that I use for setup and things that aren't particularly good recordings. They're just, I just like the music, and if it brings it out better, then it's a better system. Uh, and I think that's what a system should be doing. I'm, I would like to do a music video, to be fair. I would like to do something of... of perhaps records I, I, I like. But from reading comments, I've noticed that if you say you like something, there's, there'll always be some people who hate it and think you're an idiot, or why didn't you mention this, or why didn't you mention that? So I don't, I'm a little bit scared <laughs> of doing that one. I don't know. I did wonder about doing it as a, almost like a, and this is a UK thing, I don't know if, that, I don't know if this is something that's a thing in the outer sort of world, really, um, doing a, um, desert island discs uh, sort of type thing of music you can't be without perhaps music you can't be without from a uh, testing your audio point of view music you can't be without because perhaps it has some sort of emotional connection that you you really relate to because that that, that, that will be two completely different conversations really because uh, the whole point of the, the Desert Island Disc radio show, that is what it's about. Things that have got emotional... Some people do it as an emotional attachment thing. Some people do it as, I love this music, I, I love to dance to it, whatever. So there's way, there may be ways of doing music, but I, I'm going to give that one some thought and, and try and think of a way to do that one. Um, that's it, I think, yeah. I think, um, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, sorry for waffling on again, but you know me. Um, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a like. I think it is but a moment since I said we would do it, we had 3,000 subscribers. We're now on 3,500. Uh, possibly the fact I actually said we've got 3,000 3, probably inspired people to subscribe, perhaps. I don't know, but it's, it jumped after that. So thanks for, thanks for that. Thanks for subscribing. Um, yeah, leave it there. I'll, uh, I'll see you in a future video. Um, thanks for watching.